Do you see them? Do you feel them? That great cloud of witnesses that gather around us. It's not some spooky leftover spirits from Halloween. It's not a zombie ready to attack us. But it's the comforting presence of those who have gone before us. Last year, as the pandemic kept us from gathering in person to worship, Sunday mornings here in the sanctuary felt very strange, very awkward. They were empty. There wasn't a choir warming up. There were no children being herded into a pew. There were no people gathering to share the news of the week, to poke fun at one another, to shake hands. It felt empty. It felt dead. We prepared to worship. We learned to preach to the camera. We learned to sing along with those pre-recorded hymns. We knew you were there. We knew you were listening. But like you, we missed worshiping with other people. And then around Easter 2020, we decided to print out our church directory, family by family, couples, individuals, children. And then Steve and Carrie Miller spent a whole Saturday taping those pictures to the back of the pews. They even tried to remember where people sat so they would put you in your right places. The choir loft was filled with sopranos and altos and basses and tenors. And when we live stream, we even tried to show you those pictures. The sanctuary wasn't empty. In fact, it was filled with your presence, and it helped. When I stood up to preach, I saw your faces smiling back at me, and not a single one of you took a nap. <laughs> but then All Saints Day came last year, and something wonderful happened. Not only were you here through live streaming and present by your prayers, but now your faces were surrounding us in this space. Surrounding us were the faces of those who were alive and active and also those who had died in recent months. You see, their pictures were still in the church directory and they were smiling back and looking at peace. They were freed from the frailties of this world and we were surrounded, as you see, by that great cloud of witnesses. Our sanctuary was filled to overflowing with you and the great communion of saints. Now, we don't have those pictures still taped up to the pews. Better yet, we have you in person as you're able to gather here in worship. But we know those others are still here, as well as those on live stream, but those others in that great cloud of witnesses, we feel their love and their presence, and we claim their faithfulness that continues to teach us and guide us in our walk of faith. The writer of Hebrews knows that too. He begins this section by defining what faith is. It is the assurance of things we hope for and the convictions of things that we're yet to see. Then he starts announcing this great parade of heroes from the Bible, pioneers of faith. It's almost like a play-by-play -play commentary of who he sees that great roll call of those on whose shoulders we stand. The writer has grouped the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Noah and Rahab and Moses in categories. There are those who are righteous, those who are obedient, those who suffered and yet kept the faith. And they teach us to do the same. And now that parade is turning the corner. We see the parade and it's coming to an end. At the very end of the parade, it culminates in Jesus, the great pioneer and perfecter of faith. But wait, that parade isn't quite over because we see others step out and take their place in that parade. And now it's our turn. It's our turn to move from being spectators to join that great parade of faith. A favorite hymn of mine says, Within the circle of my faith, I take my place with all the saints, a future, a present, a past. You see, now it's our turn for the parade to continue to step out in that great parade of saints. And we're not alone. We know those have gone before us, and we feel their presence. It's time for us to move from the sidelines to join that great parade. I know you feel their presence too, not just those 19 friends for whom we'll be lighting candles, but others, many others in your life who continue to guide and support you. 
ones we've said goodbye to painfully, at times far too soon. Some of them died just weeks and months ago. For others, it's been years, years and years ago. We miss them still, but we are people of faith, we claim the assurance of things we hope for that we have yet to see. We claim the resurrection promise of life beyond this earthly life when our body of ours wears out and we cannot continue in the same way. But like a caterpillar in a cocoon, we know a butterfly will soon emerge in a fuller, more beautiful life than we can ever, ever imagine. As Paul will say, when this earthly tent in which I live, when it fades away, I have a house, a house eternal with God. Those saints surround us, and they're present right now, especially as we gather around the Lord's table. For it is in this moment and in this sacrament that things so ordinary like bread and crackers from our pantry, juice from our refrigerator, that God's Holy Spirit speaks to us and empowers us to see and believe in ways we have yet to do. God speaks to us through this thin space of God's love. And in this sacrament, the saints reach through the veil and touch us and embrace us once more. And so we gather with our own roll call of faithful ones. They're heroes in our own lives for whom we give thanks those we remember with grateful hearts. Maybe, like me, you have gotten a little interested in your family history and your ancestry. Maybe, like me, you put that little saliva in a test tube and mailed it away, trying to see if those stories you've heard all your life about your family's background are really true. My roots go back to Scotland, the Isle of Skye, and there's no way you cannot be in awe of the courage and fortitude it took for those people to leave a place when the ground grew depleted and crops wouldn't grow, when families couldn't be fed, when hunger was rampant and territorial wars and skirmishes threatened the safety of those who lived there. They wanted something better for themselves and especially for their children. And those dreams became realities as we all sit here together descendants with an education, people who are well-fed, privileged with resources they never could have imagined for their families. It is with grace and gratitude that I am humbled by their sacrifice for generations yet to be, to have faith in things unseen only because of them. Perhaps, like me, when you reflect on the courage of your ancestors, you can only marvel at those generations past who came and worked hard in factories and coal mines and back-breaking industries and learned to farm in ground that was unfamiliar. And most of us have trouble conceiving of a family history when our ancestors did not come here by choice to a new land and instead were captured, enslaved and treated like livestock, sold and resold to the highest bidder, and yet even those enslaved and tortured ones dreamed of a better world for their children and their children's children's children. None of us can forget the price paid by those who went before us and the responsibility we have for those who follow. It's time for us to join that great parade of faithful ones to stand up and stand with those others. Sometimes we have a little tiny glimpse of what other families even now are hoping for, for their children. A better place where they can be safe, where they can be free, where they can provide food and shelter for their whole families and have hope and faith in things they have yet to see in this world. For generations will follow and for themselves. Someone opened a door for my forebears, my forefathers and mothers, and gratitude and grace, and I remember the communion of saints who helped to pave the way for me. And I am called to join that parade and help to open a small way for others 
to help open doors and possibilities and gratitude for those who've gone before us. So with gratitude and grace, we come to this table where, where all are welcome, a table that extends much further than this room. It goes on and on and on, and everyone is welcome at this table, including that great cloud of witnesses from our own lives, but also from our church family, smiling, supporting, guiding each one of us, cheering for us this very day. When the Apostle Paul visited cities in his, in his region, he visited those in Greece, in Corinth, and Rome, and they all had stadiums. They had arenas where athletic competitions took place, where runners competed around ovals, and the crowd in the stands stood up and cheered and inspired those runners not to give up. We know that feeling as we make a pilgrimage now to stadiums and fields to cheer teams that are our special ones, people we know as they compete for state championships as they run races and we hear the roar of cheers to urge them on the writer of hebrews reminds us that this great cloud of witnesses is cheering for us today they're there in the bleachers let us run with perseverance this race is set before us further in the book of hebrews we have a, a coach who writes a coach who says lift your drooping hands strengthen your knees that are weak keep running straight with your feet don't give up keep your gaze on jesus who is the pioneer who is the one out front setting the pace and calling to each one of us and listen and listen to the cheers you hear in the stands from the saints who surround us maybe today is a day when you need some cheers you need some guidance some strength Maybe you are ready to give up. You are exhausted. And you hear in the stand someone call your name, cheering you forward. Some words that make you lift your eyes up in your heart. And maybe like marathon runners, you need some nourishment for the race ahead. You grow weary. You need a feeding station where you can be replenished for the journey ahead. So this day, come to this table. Come and be fed with hope where we're not alone. We're surrounded by that great company of saints, that cloud of witnesses. They're here, and so are we. Jesus Christ, that great pioneer, is here. Jesus Christ, the host at this meal, who invites you to come forward, to come forward and to be fed, to be fed with hope and life. So let us join and come to this Thanksgiving meal. Hear these words of the prophet who invites all of us. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for peoples a rich feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine. And the Lord will destroy on the mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. The Lord will swallow up death forever and wipe away every tear this is the day the Lord has made this is the Lord for whom we have waited let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation